I needed a small amplifier, and because that's the kind of thing I do, I decided to build one. And one of the more challenging parts of building anything audio related is the actual case itself. And since I recently got into 3D printing, I thought that maybe I could try using that. I'm starting with the bottom panel, and as you can see, it's fairly complex. The big advantage to being able to model the parts yourself and 3D print them is that you can make them very complex and include all the screw holes and clips and everything else that you need. The printer I'm using is the X1C from Bamboo Lab and I'm printing the entire thing from ABS plastic. ABS is tough and it's heat resistant, so it should be very well suited to this application. With the bottom panel done, there are a couple of other parts that I need before I can go any further. One of those is a bracket that goes across the back of the bottom panel, and that bracket holds the aluminum backplate of the amp. Other parts that I need to print right now are the ribs that reinforce the bottom plate and also give me mounting points for the amp boards. Now I need to go out to my workshop and cut the aluminum that I'm going to be using for the back plate of the amp. Now my first cut was made with the sled and my second cut here is one that I don't recommend. Cutting aluminum like this on a table saw is much more risky because it's more likely to kick back. To make sure that the corners of my 3D print turn out good, I have these little circle tabs that anchor it down to the build plate. I need to trim those off. And then I can glue on that bracket that I printed from Red ABS. And also I can fasten the ribs in place with screws from underneath. Once again, all the screw holes are already there. And countersunk. I need to do a bit more work on the back plate. I need to drill some holes for the jacks and also the power cord to come in. I'm gonna start off with a small bit and then make those holes bigger with a step drill. This is gonna be a two channel amplifier, a fairly low power one, and I'm using the LM3886 in a fairly standard implementation, as you can see here. And from that, I made a board layout. Aww. I did a homemade version of this board layout using my toner transfer method. And that way I knew for certain that it was gonna work. And then I sent it off and had boards professionally made. Now the brackets that I'm adding here are to mount another heat sink on top. And those go in between the chip amp and the back plate, which is also a heat sink. Now I can get it wired up, starting with the output. And I'm gonna wire those directly from the board to the jacks. And then I can put the input jacks in and get those tightened up and wire those in as well. Except these go into terminal blocks on each board. For the power that comes in, I'm not using a socket. I'm just gonna wire it directly with this cord. And I have 3D printed this strain relief here that hugs the wire as it goes through the back and also provides a grommet for it. And then the wires can go through that first rib and the bores get screwed down to that first rib. And here's the transformer. It's 46 volts AC and I got this from an old receiver that I took apart a few years ago. Now more wiring, I like to solder everything and then get a heat shrink on there to seal it up. And then it's back to the 3D printer to print more parts. This is actually the top panel and it has all these slots in there for ventilation. And the side panels are printed next. Once again, I got those circles on the corners to keep it anchored down to the build plate. The part that I'm putting on here 
holds the power supply capacitors. I got two here, big ones. And I made a small circuit board that fits right on top. And the rectifier goes into that from the top as well. I get the wires from the transformer and I can solder it directly to those caps. And then the output goes directly over to the first amplifier and then daisy chains over to the second one. To turn the amplifier on and off, I wanted to use a momentary switch. So I designed and built this latching circuit that I'm plugging the power wires into. And that gets screwed down to those ribs once again and connected. And when I click the switch, I get voltage, 58 volts DC. I click it again and it turns off. The transformer has another winding, a nine volt one. So I'm gonna use that to power LEDs on the front. So I made a board that will light up when that is powered on. You can see that here. I later changed that though, because it wasn't giving enough light. Now some more assembly on the top and side panels. Once again, I need to trim off those circular tabs, sand everything relatively smooth. I gotta say that a lot of this is a test just to see how well this plastic holds up. So I didn't pay a lot of attention to the fine details here, just in case I would be putting time into something that was gonna fail. And at this point I can say with confidence because I made this almost three months ago, that it's working just fine. Now the front panel is another piece of ABS plastic that's printing here, once again, fairly complex. And once again, it has those circular tabs on the corners to anchor it. I need to be trimmed off and sanded smooth. And then I took all of the outside parts that you can see and I sprayed them with this metallic black paint. Once again, this was a bit of a test to see how the plastic would react to that paint. And I can say once again that it held up just fine. These tabs that I'm gluing on here latch onto the top panel from the front, kind of hook in and hold the front panel in place on the top. And then I can put the power switch in. This is an old one that I had laying around. The bezel that I have in here is a piece of lens from a fluorescent light. And here you can see the new light board that I made for the front. And that pops in there and I held that in place with hot melt glue. Then I can wire in the power, hook up the switch, and then begin final assembly. The front panel gets screwed to the base and then the top cover slips down over and hooks into those clips on the front and screws from the side go into those ribs. Like I said, even though I need this amp, this is mostly an experiment to see if I could 3D print the case. And now that I know that I can, it'll hold up just fine. I may do this over again, but do a better job this time paying attention to the details a bit more. And if I have to build another case at some point in the future, I won't hesitate to use this method.